Hey guys, it's General Heed here. How is everyone doing today? So, for today's video, I'm going to be showing you 10 more things on Halo 1 or Combat Evolved that you probably never noticed before. I haven't done one of these for a while, actually. I've kind of been putting it off. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So, the first thing I'm going to be showing you is on the mission, the mall. And that is, it's actually possible to get brute kills on this mission, even though brutes weren't introduced until much later in Halo 2. So, to get a brute kill, you might notice that if you kill one of the invisible flood uh, at the uh, armory part of this mission, uh, and then after you finish the mission and look at the post-game carnage report, if you have you know scoring on, you'll notice that you have a brute kill, and killing you know the invisible flood combat forms is indeed what causes you to have a brute kill on a mission the mall for some reason. Now it seems like it's possible there are other things you can kill that count as brute kills. Like, my friend Photos Chaos got like four of them for some reason, but he didn't, he doesn't think he killed any of those. So, I'm not sure what else, but Invisible Flood, definitely a brute kill on that mission. Now, for number two, this one I've actually showed in a previous video uh, a while back, but I don't think too many people saw it, and it's, a, it's actually a pretty interesting thing, so I wanted to show it again in this video. Uh, just because, you know, a lot of people probably still haven't noticed it before. But at this part, this is like right before the armory, actually. There is a flood combat form here, a human flood combat form that's actually friendly with the Covenant. It is on the same team as them as far as the game is concerned, like it's allies with them. So it will never attack the Covenant, they will never attack it, and the two of them will always fight together against you and other flood and sentinels. In fact, if you, uh, if you don't protect that flood combat form, uh, the flood infection forms here will actually attack it and then uh, latch onto it until it dies. So it's... It's, it's like a little mistake by Bungie when they made it. They must have put on the wrong team by accident or spawned the wrong AI. But it is uh, a friendly, covenant-friendly flood. Now for number three, this one actually some people pointed out to me. And I actually never noticed it. Because it took me a while to wrap my mind around it. Because I, I, I didn't really know like grunt ranks very well. Especially in Halo CE. And then more especially in Halo Anniversary. But just as a, you know, a summary first. Uh, in Halo CE Anniversary, Grunt Majors are these red grunts here with uh, those two spikes on its back. Uh, in classic graphics, they typically look all the same except for the armor color. Uh, maybe the backs might be a little bit different. But, you know, in Anniversary, red grunt with those two, you know, separate spikes on its back. Whereas minor grunts are these orange colored armor grunts, you know, with just a regular, you know, thing on its back. However, at this part of the mission, at the very beginning of 343 Guilty Spark, there is this one grunt here that's a red grunt, like a major grunt, but has the back of a minor grunt, in anniversary graphics at least. Sometimes in classic graphics, it, it can change a little bit with its back, but really the biggest difference is in anniversary graphics, which, you know, it's it's a red minor grunt, essentially. It, it's, it's a mistake on Bungie's part, again. They specified the wrong uh, variant to spawn, and it just causes it to glitch out and spawn like random parts. Kind of like the Honor Guard Counselor Elite on Halo 2, or the Tartarus Chieftain Brute on a different mission in Halo 2. It, it's just, you know, it, it just causes it, it to kind of randomize the armor, but in Halo 1 there weren't really many armor permutations, so that's pretty much what you get. <laughs> Alright, so for number 4. You might have noticed this before if you use a sniper a lot <laughs> against the flood, but if you haven't, then as you can see there, when you scope in with a sniper rifle on um, flood carriers, it does not turn red. It cannot track flood carriers. However, if you scope in on other enemies like hunters or even flood infection forms, it will turn red for your reticle, but not flood carriers. For some reason, scoping in on flood carriers, the sniper rifle does not recognize it as an enemy. Alright, for number five, this one is actually pretty fascinating to me, and I never would have noticed it until I was like poking around the game files uh, a couple months ago when doing this um, this like uh, joke video a while back. I forgot exactly what it was, but apparently the cryopods in classic graphics on uh, Pillar of Autumn are using the same textures as the bumblebee life pods that you escape in later in the mission. So take a close look at the textures here. Uh, ignore, you know, the headless thorn inside. That's, you know, a little um, thing that everybody knows by now. <laughs> but if you look at the textures really closely, like look at all the details and the markings, 
Uh, you may be able to tell, actually, uh, when looking at them side by side or looking up close, that it's the same textures as most of the uh, life pod. Now, the life pod does have a few other uh, separate textures, like the glass and stuff, but for the most part, it actually uses the same textures. Now, it may be hard to tell, uh, especially when it's landing on the ground here and it's kind of scorched and stuff, but you may be able to notice some bits and pieces here that, you know, ha share the same features as the, um, life pods, or rather the life pods sharing the same features as the, uh, I mean the cryopods sharing the same features as the life pod here. Uh, but really, I would never have really noticed it unless I was looking through the game files and saw that they were both sharing the same textures, uh, texture file at least. But I'm actually surprised that it actually looks pretty well, you know, when applied to two different, two completely different objects. Uh, but yeah, that's a little mind-blowing thing that I, <laughs> I noticed a while back. Anyways, for number six, this one, if you look underneath the pistol, the Halo CE Magnum, in classic graphics, at the very bottom there's a symbol. It's, it's not very clear, it's not you know high resolution or anything, but uh, it's the Japanese symbol for number seven. However, in anniversary graphics, they actually changed that symbol to the Korean symbol, for also for seven. But, yeah, it's... Um, a little difference, a little minor change between classic and anniversary graphics. Not sure why they uh, picked the language change there, but uh, just went from Japanese to Korean. Now, for number seven, this is a small one, but it was kind of a funny thing that my friend used to do, do to me very recently to mess mess with me. But um, the chain gun on the Warthog, it's actually like very solid compared to the, uh, especially the barrel of it. It's very solid compared to the barrel and. Uh, newer Halo games like Halo 2, 3, and so on. It is so solid that it can actually push uh, Spartans and other objects around just by swinging the uh, barrel around. And uh, yeah, my friend used to like mess with me uh, with that but by like knocking me off when I was trying to like stand on the Warthog or something. But just a little small thing there that uh, is a little different from the newer Halo games. Now, number eight. This one is actually kind of funny. Um, I never actually really thought about this before. But have you ever wondered why, when you uh, use like a headshot weapon, like a pistol or a sniper rifle in Halo 1, and then you shoot a hunter in the back in its exposed part, it's a one-shot kill? Well, that is because the back of the hunter, the, the fleshy part of the hunter, in the game files, it's actually flagged as a, um, it's marked as its head. So you may think the hunter's, uh, like, you know, Game game wise, you may think the head is like at the very top where its helmet is, but no, the hunter's head is actually its back, <laughs> and I don't know. I, I guess you could technically say its head is its actual head is its back, and its back is its head. But that is why headshot weapons one shot kill it because you are at literally getting a headshot on it, and you can confirm that if you have a uh, scoring on on MCC. If you shoot the hunter in the back with a headshot weapon, you'll get a headshot medal. Now for number 9, there's another uh, small minor one, but when you're in a vehicle, such as a pelican here, you may notice that looking around, your compass on your assault rifle does not move around correctly. So let's take a look again. See, I'm looking around, it's not moving, it only moves when the pelican moves. So that's basically what's going on with the assault rifle. Its compass, when you're you know not in a vehicle, it will work perfectly when you're looking around, but when you're inside a vehicle, I guess the compass is based off of the vehicle's position, not your position anymore, not your camera position or anything. Or, or technically your camera position is the vehicle's position. But yeah, it's not using like your, where you're looking anymore. It's, it's using where the vehicle is looking, essentially. All right, for number 10, our very last one. This is actually uh, pointed out to me by uh, CIA391, who uh, is actually one of the admins for the uh, Halopedia. But apparently, the Magnum in Halo C Anniversary, if you look closely, it may look familiar to you, like very familiar to you, especially you know if you've looked at uh, the weapons of detail throughout all the Halo games. And the reason why it may look familiar to you is because it is actually just reusing the Halo 3 Magnum skin. They are, you know, lore-wise, they are different Magnum variants, but technically speaking, they are actually using the same skin. It's just the Halo 3 skin, well, that's the original skin, uh, you know, aside from having like a lot of similar features, the original Halo CE Magnum, 
the Halo C's Halo 3 skin was basically taken into Halo CE and it was touched up a little bit, but overall it's basically the same. See, a lot of the features are the same, a lot of the small details are the same, even like scratch marks. So here's a quick comparison. This is the uh, Magnum skin, all the textures in CEA, and this is it in Halo 3. It really is just like the, the brightness of it and the, uh, the, you know, the symbol underneath, the Japanese and Korean symbol. Um, but yeah, so this is CEA. And this is Halo 3 again. If you look very closely, you, you can rewind if you want, or uh, I'll actually put it side by side for you right now. You can see, like, every tiny little detail, aside from, you know, the brightness and stuff, is the same. Even the scratch marks on it, the scuff marks and everything. Uh, everything's the same, except for, obviously, like, the, the model numbers is like M6C and M6D, I think. And then, you know, the, the Japanese symbol, or Korean symbol underneath. But, yeah, so... The uh, Halo 3 texture is reused in CEA, which is not surprising because CE Anniversary actually, for the most part, is like a uses like all reach textures for almost everything in the game. But it does actually use a few Halo 3 textures here and there, which uh, which I actually likes. I I back then I personally preferred the Halo 3 textures over the reach ones, but that's another discussion for another day, another debate. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it to be interesting. Uh, if there's anything you think I missed or other things that people you think uh, should know, you know, feel free to point it out in the comments. Um, and anything else I'm going to look into as well, just let me know in the comments as well, and I'll definitely do my best to look into it when I get a chance. But other than that, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.